this episode of Lemonade is dedicated to you, Pedro Vieira, an entrepreneur, uh, a mentor, a manager of 500 Georgia, 500 startup, Startups Georgia, mm -hmm. and uh, all around great guy. Pedro, what's going on in your life right now, like in 2020? It's crazy, crazy year, right? It is, I right? guess everyone, everyone says the same thing. Um, pretty different from, from past years where I was traveling around the world with, uh, with projects for 500. This, yeah. this year is actually been pretty quiet. Luckily, things uh, have improved, and so now I'm here in Tbilisi mm -hmm. having fun, kicking off our yeah. project here. So. And back in California, it's, it's Blade Runner. Crazy, crazy, crazy days. Crazy, crazy uh, year. Crazy, crazy in many ways. Yeah, crazy it in is. Many ways. Politics, it is. Climate. So, how is Five Hundred Startups Georgia so far? Uh, terrific. We we're kicking off the second phase of the project. Congratulations, with, by the way. Thank you so much. Uh, terrific opportunity, I think, for the local founders to interact uh, with our team and, and our mentors. So we're kicking off the second phase now. Mm -hmm. It's going to be six weeks of intense training, getting mm -hmm. them ready for for a demo day and mm -hmm. more interactions with. Um, with more investors other right. than us in the Bank of Georgia, right. who already invested in, in these companies. Mm -hmm. um, we have a good mix of companies, both Georgian companies and uh, a few international companies right. who are also coming in. So we're, we're now getting to know each other in person. We've been working about two months now mm -hmm. uh, online. So everyone already knows everyone, but not in person. So it's th this last <laughs> it week was the first week here. It was really interesting to see mm -hmm. People start to interact in, mm -hmm. in organizing things face to face. Mm -hmm. uh, you came down here to announce the, you know, the selected selected team for the next phase. What's going on in the next phase? What's what is going to happen? Yeah. So the um, the first uh, going on step back one step back. The the first phase of the program is always focused on mm -hmm. what we call foundational topics. Right. So we're we're trying to help companies confirm that they have product market fit, which means the market wants what they're building or what they're trying to sell or mm -hmm. license. Uh, and that was a period of four weeks of training and right. then eight weeks of experimentation. What we're starting now is six weeks that we call intensive growth, where we're gonna be focusing more on topics that are related with, the sca with scaling the company faster. So mm -hmm. sales, marketing, mm -hmm. Uh, user acquisition mm -hmm. techniques mm -hmm. and then fundraising because they'll need more money or more capital to right. to enter um, the global markets. And that's also going to be remote, right? That That's going to be a hybrid. So some of us will be here in person for the duration of these six weeks. Some of us will be online. So the mentors for now will be online and then a few of them will join me uh, in the rest of the 500 staff for the last two, three weeks of the, of this period mm -hmm. to prepare for, for demo day. Let's rewind a little bit where were you born when were you born I was tell born, me about the child <laughs> i was i was born in the 70s in uh -huh. portugal um countryside portugal small town of thirty thousand people probably mm -hmm. uh, so very quiet safe environment uh grew up stayed there until 18 went to the capital of lisbon in portugal mm -hmm. for for college mm -hmm. and basically Never went back to my to my hometown right. to live, but <laughs> just from Lisbon, visit. yeah, just to visit. Still have family there. My parents still there. My sister still there. Um, but yeah, so after Lisbon, it was ten years in Lisbon, and then fifteen years in San Francisco, mm. and now back in Lisbon. The last couple of years already back in Lisbon again. Mm -hmm. um, who knows? More time in Tbilisi, maybe in my future. Who knows? People, yeah. people keep telling me I need to become a Georgian uh, citizen. So I've been further from that. So yeah, you I, keep I doing what it. you're doing, and you're going to be honorary <laughs> Georgian citizen. You know what I mean? I love it here. I love it here. I love the people. Yeah. I love the culture. I love the food, the quality of life. So tell me more about the childhood. How, what kind of child were you? Were you into technology? Were you into? Uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't. I I'm not going to say I was a, a tech geek growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, I also grew up in a very um, in, in, a, in a, I would say, low-class family, so not right. a lot of money for gadgets. Mm -hmm. um, I think my first interaction with, with technology, technology, the technology we know today in a computer, right. I was probably around 16. That's when I started learning how to do some coding on some like after-school lessons. Mm -hmm. um, 
but overall I was just, you know, I was a very entrepreneurial kid, I guess, because I had limited resources, so I had to make for a living. <laughs> uh, always, I always had different things going on, different jobs, uh, summer jobs, sometimes right. at, during college was almost a full-time job while studying. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, just... Uh, what was your first lemonade? Like, what did you, what my did you flip? My first lemonade. <laughs> My, it's funny, we were talking about it, about it last night in our founder's dinner. My first business was actually raising, uh, creating and selling ducks. Ducks? In my parents' backyard, yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah, with my best friends. Um, our, our best customers were our family and friends. Right, right. <laughs> and so that was the first thing, yeah, that was the first thing I actually learned how to, how to build something of my own. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so tech, tech, not technology not driven. Not technology, not scalable, right? <laughs> to the rate that we expect from the no, startups. Not at all. Not at all. No, no. Uh, tell me about the parents. Like, what, what was, what's the background of your parents? Um, mom is a fa was a factory worker mm -hmm. in childcare um, teacher, if mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. so that did the did the two things. Mm -hmm. Comes from a large family of mm -hmm. another five sisters. So. I grew up in a pretty five large sisters. five sisters, Three? so there's six in total. Wow! Uh, so a lot of cousins, a lot of uncles and aunties to to play around wow. for for Christmas and all the other celebrations. Um, my dad worked in electronics and appliances, so mm -hmm. fixing appliances, mm -hmm. fixing electronics. So, so mm -hmm. maybe I did get a little bit of my engineering brain from right. there right. and the taste for for fixing things. Mm -hmm. and, so um, he studied a bit more than my mom. My mom only did uh, four years in school, I think mm -hmm. fourth grade. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad studied a bit longer and so then did electronics. Um, both pretty simple family f people gotcha. grew up on the countryside. So, so you take off to Lisbon to study I in college? Took off to Lisbon, yeah. yeah. Why? And that, that's, that's where the university is. To be okay. honest. I mean, there's other cities with universities too, obviously, but I always wanted to be an engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, first and foremost, I wasn't really clear what type of engineer I wanted to be, but I wanted to be an engineer. Right. And for that, the best engineering school in Portugal is in Lisbon. Lisbon. Uh, and so I knew I was going to study there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, when the time come, came, just applied and, right. and went there. And, and, and how was the time in Lisbon? Uh, technology University, right? Yeah, was Engineering it, yeah. Technical University of yeah, Lisbon. Technical. So how was the time there? Uh, it was it was cool. It was it was it was um, challenging at times because I had to work to pay for my dues mm -hmm. and, and and study. Mm -hmm. uh, but all in all, it was a terrific experience. Finally, living in a in a bigger city with more things to and do and being independent as well, right? So. Being independent, though, I mean, I was always independent in my businesses and trying to selling ducks know, and <laughs> selling ducks and stuff <laughs> like that. Uh, but. So independent in that sense, uh, right. my parents always helped me with everything they could. Actually, they gave me more than they mm -hmm. probably could. Mm -hmm. um, but then going to Lisbon, yeah, I was living by myself. It was a different experience. Though I, for the first years, I didn't live by myself. I lived in a, in a dorm, like mm -hmm. in a university mm -hmm. residency. So did you study, study, or did you have side hustles as well during the, your time in university? During my time at the university, I worked for different departments inside the university. Inside the university. Yeah, uh, not related with academics per se, so not teaching, but, um, but departments that had to do with the management of the school. Mm. So um, advisory services to the managing board, mm -hmm. um, things like that. Then after selling ducks, what's your next venture? What's your next business? What happens then? Well, so my venture per se start that, I, that I did like from scratch mm -hmm. as a business, I would say it was, it was the tech company that actually uh, got me to stay in San Francisco okay. the longest. Mm -hmm. uh, until then, uh, between the ducks and the, and the <laughs> internet, um, it was working for other projects okay. from, from other people, but not okay. mine, or so you, teaching at the university. Okay. So you were gathering experience in, in, you know, during working? I, I, I was. I think. I think. I think about it like this. No, I didn't. I don't. I don't actually didn't think about it that way. Okay. Um, always kind of like followed whatever path I was in and tried to make the best mm -hmm. of it. So my career actually started in teaching. So after studying in that school, engineering school, I ended up becoming a faculty there. Mm -hmm. um, and so at that time, I wasn't thinking I wanted to be like an entrepreneur or a, right. a tech founder right, right, or whatever. Right. It wasn't in my mind. It was. I, want, I like to teach, I like to share knowledge. Uh, it's 
irony or not, that's what I do now at Fafana, I share my knowledge. Uh, but I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to teach at the university, so I stayed there, got a job um, as, a, as a faculty teaching uh, in the engineering department. Mm -hmm. And then, as part of that path, mm -hmm. went to the US to get a PhD. So I, did, again, didn't go there to start a company. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but after being there, decided I didn't want to stay in academia full time. Mm -hmm. uh, gave up my job in Lisbon, which was like a crazy thing to do, according to most people, because right. it's a job for life. Right. Uh, well paid for, for the country standards. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just didn't want to be a full time professor, it's like teaching things that I had never done. Right. And so, um, yes, yeah, so I gave up my, that job, quit that job and uh, stayed in the US. And yeah. then th that's, that's when the tech So you went to Berkeley, right? Started. I went to Berkeley, UC Berkeley. Yeah. yeah. So go how Bears, was it? Go Bears, go Bears. <laughs> uh, it was amazing. It was amazing it's, it's because- It's a great place, huh? Because it is a great school, one of yeah. the best in the world. Um, but for the whole experience, uh, being European and having worked in the university in Europe, I had a feeling for what an American school could be, but right. just being there and experiencing it mm -hmm. and, um, and, and being exposed to different cultures, different teaching and learning mm -hmm. environments was terrific. It changed me significantly. Mm -hmm. Living in Berkeley uh, is a unique experience. Um, Berkeley is a unique city in the US. There's no comparable to it in terms of the, the spirit uh, of the city, the spirit mm -hmm. of the people there, mm -hmm. the type of community you have there. Mm -hmm. So definitely it was a, a life-changing experience. For right. Me. Let's move on to, to the place where you begin your venture, where you, f mm -hmm. you know, founded your first yeah. tech company that took off. Yeah. What was it and how did it happen? Yeah, so it was, it's uh, again, some, some, some things have happened as a coincidence or not. So, um, the company, is called Good Guide, mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it's a company that helps people buy healthier, safer products for them and their families, uh, mm -hmm. consumer product goods, mm -hmm. so food, cleaners, uh, personal care products. Mm -hmm. um, and it, start, it was a spin-off of a project that was already ongoing in Berkeley with mm -hmm. a faculty that I actually I didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd never took his classes, uh, but he knew my advisor, my PhD advisor, and when he decided to do a spin-off of that project, looked for a few grad students that could uh, help him mm -hmm. make it into a commercial venture. Uh, and, and that's how it all got started. We raised mm -hmm. money from two very large VCs, uh, two of the largest in the world, DFJ and NEA. Mm -hmm. um, and it just it took off from there. And what did you do at the company? Like, what was, I was your role? I, I, my role, I mean, as, as every founder will tell you, it changes over time. Yeah. Um, and so other than the pizza and the cleaning up that everyone does, um, it started off as being the hub between the engineering, the science, and the business team, basically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because my background, I came from the came, was coming from the science world, but I had already done management consultant too. Um, I had a good understanding of the, mm -hmm. the different languages between the scientists and the engineers. So I was a hub there. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, we ended up hiring people to support some of this translation right. and started doing more uh, business development, more client relationship right, right, management. Right. You raised a substantial amount of money from, from big investors. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what happened then? Was there exit? Yeah, there was an exit. So we sold the company in 2012, mm -hmm. the summer of 2012, was acquired by one of the largest top three, uh, depending on how you measure, companies that do certification of mm -hmm. quality and safety mm -hmm. for products. Mm -hmm. um, makes it's, makes uh, sense. It's called Underwriter, Underwriters Labs. Mm -hmm. um, they're one of the oldest American companies over 100 years old, so they're a very rare thing. There's not that many companies in the US with, with that. With claim. that expertise, right? Uh, yeah, it's basically them, Berkshire, Hathaway, and if, few others. How, how, how long was the process? How long, how tough and long was the process? The, the scrutiny the M, yeah, exit. yeah. The, the, the process to get acquired, I would say about a year. Mm. Uh, it depends. You never really clear how you measure the, the right. beginning of the when, process. When was the beginning? The right? beginning of the process because we already had interactions with them before. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say a year and then after signing the acquisition deal, we were locked in for two years with mm -hmm. the company. Mm -hmm. 
and then eventually we all started mm -hmm. moving on to other projects. Was 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 getting funded mm -hmm. a smooth process, or or did it take a lot of? Uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I we we did multiple rounds over mm -hmm. the the six years or seven that right. we were building the company. Right. Um, some of them easier than others. I I think that. At the beginning, it was actually relatively easy, mm -hmm. and um, but in a process that I, I I tell our founders that doesn't happen that much anymore because we basically raised money with our resumes. It was mm -hmm. okay. We were like these. It was a mix: Berkeley, MIT, Stanford guys, mm -hmm. uh, with a good idea, a little bit of validation, but really not a whole lot built. Right. Um, and we raised a ton of money just on that. Mm -hmm. These days, that's it's that's impossible, tougher, yeah. or almost impossible to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also easier to and cheaper to prototype, so it's, it makes sense that investors would actually ask for something more than right. they used right, to right, right. Uh, 15 years ago. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so the first part was relatively smooth. The follow on, the following rounds, some easier than others. It depended on how we or mm -hmm. where we were with our metrics. Mm -hmm. We were building a company that was ahead of, of the curve, if you will. Mm -hmm. I guess almost all startup is going to try and make that claim. Exactly. But um, I mean, it's a company in the health and sustainability space. And so mm -hmm. it's very hard to, to monetize some of these services. Yeah. So, so we had easier rounds and we had harder rounds. Yeah. What happens after that? You exit mm -hmm. and um, is is there anything going on simultaneously, or or you just exit from that and then clean cut? Yeah. Uh, so for the two years that followed the acquisition was definitely still more of the same. So mm -hmm. same same job, uh, and obviously with added responsibility of making it work mm -hmm. inside the bigger okay. company and integrating the two the mm -hmm. two companies, if you will. Um, after that, I uh, started working on a few other things. I started doing some angel investment, which mm -hmm. I hadn't been doing until then, mm -hmm. um, and launched with a few other people uh, a nonprofit called West, 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 yeah. West to West, mm -hmm. uh, which helps bridge between Portugal and Silicon yeah. Valley. Bigger ambition yeah. would be West Coast to West Coast, yeah. hence the name. I was going to um, ask you that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the. Um, but the, but the mission is very simple. There's a lot of uh, immigrant founders mm -hmm. that are trying to, to connect with Silicon Valley, either move there altogether or just mm -hmm. go there, fundraise, or go mm -hmm. there, learn about a specific theme. Mm -hmm. So the mission of West to West is to help with that. We, right. don't, we don't invest in, this compa in the companies that we help. Uh, we don't ask them to pay us anything mm -hmm. for, for the expertise we mm -hmm. share with them. It's, it's a true nonprofit of uh, a network of volunteers who identify themselves with a mission mm -hmm. and, um, and offer their time for free. You coming back from uh, outside of Lisbon, going to Lisbon to school, uh, from not so rich family, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Then moving to California, studying there, yeah. starting your venture, exiting your venture, get uh -huh. some money, starting uh, angel investing, and also involving into your hometown, like the home country, trying to help them. Uh -huh. What's the rationale behind that? Like you just wanna, you just wanna give back. Yeah, yeah. What do you, it's, what it's, do you, what it's, do you get? No, it's it's the give, it's the giving back. Yes. It's the, um, you know, help yourselves from ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the realization that um, that I now have enough. Mm -hmm that I can afford helping others, right. you know? um, and so, and I have time, right. and, and I have capacity to do it, and I, like I said, I like teaching, I like sharing my yeah. knowledge, yeah, yeah. so um, I think it's just that, you know, combination mm. of things that, that drove me to do it. Now, this is a roller coaster ride, right? Mm -hmm. All of our lives is a roller coaster ride, yeah. and on, on, along the way there are peaks and there are valleys and there are lows. So tell me a little bit about how do you deal with the lows? What's your stance on failure without this cliche, <laughs> cliche entrepreneurial stuff? Yeah, Just yeah, yeah. How, do you, how do you get up when you fall down? Because eventually you will yeah, fall I mean, down, but how do you, you get up? You will, you will fall down, definitely. Um, I, you know, I, I put things in perspective. Right. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. So I just, I look back where I was before the failure I look back where I was five years before mm -hmm. that failure. I look back where yeah, I was is, when I was five years old. This is old. still better than 20 years ago. Yeah, so exactly. Win -win, right? Exactly. So I put things in perspective, in mm -hmm. my perspective, looking mm -hmm. at my journey, and mm -hmm. I put things in perspective, looking at other people's journeys. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I was lucky enough that I've traveled enough around the world, so I have multiple perspectives on yeah. what's being, you know, in a, in How a dip. How people live, yeah. Yeah. And so um, I just, you know, I try to be thoughtful of that, mm -hmm. of those realities that I've seen. And, and then it makes it easier to justify that maybe I, my failure is not yeah, that yeah. bad. You know? So how long does it take? Like, uh, of course, it depends to, on, to on, back. The, yeah, <laughs> on how, how big the head is. But, yeah. you know, generally speaking, like, do you I just don't. have a conversation with yourself and everything is good then? Or is it an yeah. act yeah. of <laughs> I think so. crawling I'm, out I'm, of the I'm hole? I'm fairly pragmatic, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I have a number for how, how many days or how right. many hours it takes me to, to, fi to figure things out. Right. Um, so the process is just rationalizing it and getting the perspective of, yeah, of the situation. Yeah, and going for long runs. I, I exercise and I, I, I run, bike a lot, do mm. triathlon. Mm. So also sports also help me on yeah. that. Uh, when I'm upset with something, where, I'm, where I have something that I need to figure out, mm. uh, usually running for a few hours yeah. helps a lot. What <laughs> are the other hobbies that you have? Like, What do you like doing? Well, unfortunately, I mean, I, I like to do a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, mm. I don't have time for much. Yeah. And, Especially last year, I was traveling so much, it was even harder. Mm -hmm. um, I like photography a lot. Right. Uh, don't have enough time to just go on photography hunts. Yeah. Uh, but every time I'm, you know, on the road or with friends, you know, these days you have, you know, a phone and so easy to capture the moment. So I try to do that. Yeah. I like cooking. Uh, mm -hmm. That I do more often, especially in COVID times. Cooked a lot. <laughs> hey, we all do. <laughs> <laughs> we all became uh, chefs. Yeah. Uh, so I'd say yeah. Uh, and then and then you know working out. Like I said, I right. I I, am, I grew up doing triathlon when mm -hmm. I was a kid, um, competing in the national championship mm -hmm. in Portugal. Well, then stopped. That's before moving to Lisbon. That's or? that's before moving to Lisbon, and then first couple years in Lisbon. Mm -hmm. Then I had to slow down because I was working and studying, so I didn't have enough time mm. to, to do triathlon. And uh, a few years ago, came back, started practicing again. I'm not competing in the championship, not doing official races, but I uh, was planning to do a full Ironman this September. Wow. Uh, those plans got uh, botched because of COVID, uh, but still intended on doing one uh, as fast, as early as possible, right. probably as early as next year. Right. From, from this little portion of your story, we already can gather mm -hmm. um, for many Georgians and for many you know, up and coming entrepreneurs, uh, the piece of success, right? So your mm -hmm. exit would be deemed as a huge success for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with success? What's your stance on success? Yeah. What do you think about it? And well, do you consider that's, the success? That's a, that's, that's, a, that's a very good question. I, I don't consider the exit we had like a massive success. Right. Um, but uh, but it was a good it was a good success mm -hmm. if you put it in perspective going yeah. back to our strategy <laughs> uh, that we discussed yeah. um, I um, I also like think a lot about the, um, how do you how do you celebrate success mm -hmm. regardless of its uh, magnitude mm -hmm. um, and I have this conversation a lot especially with folks in Silicon Valley where, you know, the level of ambition is, is very, very high. Yeah. Um, the, in that um, ambitious people tend to, to never be happy with the, the achievements yeah. they get, They're, you know, and I, I tend to do that. I tend to raise the bar when I'm about to, to get there. So it feels like I never actually uh, reach, reached what I mm -hmm, wanted. So mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. always yeah, not satisfied. Right. Uh, so I always tend to feel like I didn't actually have success because mm. there's always something else, the elusive, right? The elusive yeah, bar, yeah. Exactly. So, so I'm also working on that, especially the last couple of years, I've act, proactively been working on that. So but don't same you way. need this, this uh, you know, don't you need to feel accomplished? That you achieve, no, yeah, no, you definitely. So that's why I'm saying I'm working on celebrating those small victories. Okay, oh, that's what you want. On, okay. Yeah, on, on being able to stop for, yeah. for a bit and mm -hmm. say, okay, we yeah. did this. So it let's move out. the bar tomorrow. Exactly. Let's just yeah. celebrate let's the day. Just take, take yeah. a deep breath, enjoy yeah. the moment, yeah. celebrate it, and then. So you are starting to do it now, right? So yeah. Why did you why, why did you come to this conclusion that you need that? I don't know. Maybe maybe it's my midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, I think yeah. I think that uh, at one point in time, I just started looking back and feel like you know I've done so many things. I came it's like been you a said, race, right? I came from like this small country, country city, 
went to the you know the the tech mecca of the world yeah. and, and built a company and sold it so um I have to look at all that and say you have to start celebrating some of yeah. those steps. Otherwise, yeah, it feels yeah. like you know when when are you going to be happy when Elon puts you in a rocket and you go to Mars and yeah. then you get to Mars but you want to go somewhere else, right? So, so yeah, why celebrate once when you can celebrate? <laughs> that, that, exactly. That, you exactly. know, George's exactly. motto is that, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> we have every day is a celebration. All right. So, um, what do you do to keep yourself motivated? You know, continuing on this topic, like every day is a is a hustle, every day is a race, especially mm-hmm. in these times, right? Yeah. And and the motivation is not constant, so it's it's jumping up and down. Up and down. So, do you have some methods how you keep yourself motivated and and productive? Yeah, yeah. I don't know about the productivity part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty pretty good procrastinator. Yeah. Um, I I mean I look I I again I. I look at the results of the the things that I do, and, and I try to to replicate them. Right. Mm-hmm. So, if we if if I help five founders with angel investment, if I I have fun doing it, I think you know I can help another five. So, mm-hmm. I will try and mm-hmm. and raise the bar mm-hmm. in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but but. At the end, I think the motivation, the thing that motivates me the more and keeps driving me is this interaction with the founders, mm-hmm. whether to share capital or knowledge or mm-hmm. whatever it is, um, to see the impact that we can have in their lives mm-hmm. with what we can offer mm-hmm. uh, is amazing. And mm-hmm. so um, I just use that as a motivation. Right? Yeah. When, when I look back and, and I say, okay, I went to Saudi Arabia to do this program, like in a country where no one ever thought this was possible. We have a group of, you know, amazing founders, almost half of them females. And you think about that and it's like, okay, it's like, I want to do more of this, right? And now I'm here in Georgia, same thing. It's a country that's been trying to do a lot in early stage technology with different players. But now this is like the opportunity to actually make it shine Mm -hmm. and uh, and turn it into like a hub for the heat for the region. So that, It's this type of new projects that motivate me the okay. most. To be so how that 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 is a perfect segue to into 500 startups, Georgia. Mm-hmm. How yeah. did that happen? Like why Georgia? How Georgia? And and, and how did you end up here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so 500 um, does uh, what we call ecosystems building around the world. Right. Um, and we 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 tend to do it in regions where we know there's talent. We know there's enough local players that are interested in in growing a tech ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Um, And then what we bring into that region is the know-how, the expertise Mm -hmm. that we've gathered over 10 years from Silicon Valley, Mm -hmm. but then adjusted to the the local Mm -hmm. economy, to the local market. And with 500 Georgia, what happened was the, the government through JITA was um, was intended on bringing a brand name known accelerator yeah. to the country. Mm-hmm. Um, opened up a a public call, a, yeah. a public call with the World Bank in, mm-hmm. in construction with the World Bank. We we they told us about it. They asked us, invited us to apply, as they invited a few a few other companies, a few other accelerators, and mm-hmm. and so I I led that process from the beginning on the 500 side, mm-hmm. designing the proposal. Uh, got. Luckily, we got it. Uh, super happy with it. Did you know it's anything a, about Georgia at that point? No, I confess I didn't know much about Georgia. Right. I, I, I had been doing some things in the region. I've, I had been talking with other neighboring countries right. and either, uh, even had done some work already uh, in Russia, but never never Georgia. Uh, never, never Georgia. Um, so I've learned a lot. Um, it was a good coincidence, a happy coincidence, that then I found out that one of the JITA links uh, david uh, had a, yeah. a portuguese co-founder <laughs> hey david so so, <laughs> so little by little uh there were like these little connections between portugal and georgia and um and so i continue in that role of of being the managing director for this program mm-hmm. um we're lucky that we have ariane and and not to like mm-hmm. helping build it also from the scratch awesome up so this yeah. is not just a bigger project obviously mm-hmm. Um, and um, I'm super happy, super happy that we're doing this. Uh, mm-hmm. I can start to see mm-hmm. some of the impact in the local founders and hopefully we'll continue doing it for, for longer. 
Great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, provided the, the COVID situation yeah, yeah, enables we'll, us. We'll make it work. Yeah, we do. We always do. So, um, you know, topic of, of gratitude uh, always pops up in these interviews. You know, it's a recurring theme. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's the gratitude for you? Uh, what's the act of gratitude for you? Do you practice it uh, consciously? And whether, like, do, do you think there are, you know, can you name a couple of people that are milestone people that I call in our lives? Like, mm -hmm. people that had so big impact in your life, positive mm -hmm. one, that you would say that, okay, I'm here because of those guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so starting with the gratitude, definitely um, try to to be mindful of that yeah. and, and thank people for everything that they've um, given me and continue giving. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I think I say thank you a lot. People sometimes ask me, why are you saying thank you? I don't know, maybe it's an education thing. Right. Um, as for the people that I you know, can be more grateful for, uh, as cheesy as it may sound, I would say my parents because of two things, because because of the values that they've in, imputed in me by showing me how hard working actually is necessary yeah. to be able to achieve your results. And so I worked they did very, by example, very hard right? and they led by example, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so definitely I think a lot of, of my hard work today comes from that. Um, and then even, and then even though I, I said earlier that they couldn't help me much with material goods, mm -hmm. they did whatever they could to keep me in private school, mm. myself and my sisters, I have two younger sisters, and uh, as much as they could, they found ways to sponsor our private school. Mm. Uh, in that, um, not saying public schools are not good, public schools in Portugal are actually very good, um, especially where I was growing up, the public school, right. the, the public high school was very good, and I ended up studying in public high school at the very end of, of the um, of the run of, of, of the <laughs> yeah of that journey. Uh, but uh, but yes, yeah, so but they 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 did everything they could to give me mm -hmm. at least the minimum, the bare minimum education mm -hmm. to to continue mm -hmm. and go to a good university, which then led me to an even better university, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. on and so forth. So. I'm super grateful to, for them, to them for that. Um, then, I mean, at the university uh, in Portugal, I had a couple people that were my mentors, academic mentors, and opened up a few doors that allowed me to go to the US. Mm -hmm. um, um, and so I, I think those would be the groups of people that I'm thankful right. for, right. Uh, like more a pers personal, professional level. Um, and you're trying to actively um, be mindful of that and, and express the mm -hmm. gratitude, right? Yeah. Like, how, like do you <laughs> notice, like, uh, do you notice when people are grateful of you? Uh, I, do you I stop do. and think about I, it? I, I, I do. Um, I do. I don't know if I do a terrific job at it. Okay. Um, I'm also conscious of that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm not very good at taking compliments. Mm -hmm. Like... I don't know, can't, can't can really explain I don't know what why, do, maybe right? it's because, yeah, I don't know if it's because I come from hum, from humble roots. And, mm -hmm. um, but I, I had, I, I share this a lot too, I had um, a professor in Berkeley that told me, um, you, when someone gives you a compliment, mm -hmm. don't just, don't brush it off. You do that all the time. Don't brush it off, just stop, look the person in the eye and just say thank you, right? Um, and uh, I think since then I've been trying to do that and, and say thank you to people Yeah. because um, I think it's important. What would you tell up and coming entrepreneurs, how would they be effective in battling burnout? Uh, yeah, terrific question. I think the first, the first thing is to, to start at the beginning, which is w why they're doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people decide to be entrepreneurs, if that's a thing you can decide yeah. or choose to be. I mean, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, sarcasm sometimes comes up. The, the, um, I just tell them first they have to know why they're doing what they're doing, because if they're mm. doing it for the wrong reasons, they're more likely to burn out or they're more likely to actually burn other people out, which yeah. is even worse. Yeah. Um, and then um, 
if they are doing it for the right reasons, if they have, um, you know, the, the mission uh, in mind, mm -hmm. then it's about uh, preparing for, for a marathon, mm -hmm. not a sprint. I know mm -hmm. a lot of people say that. Um, and, but, but it's I, true. But it is true. And, and I, since I've run that marathon, no pun intended, <laughs> no pun intended, um, I, I keep reminding our founders of that. I push them really hard. Right. Um, like in intensive periods like these six weeks now here in Georgia, uh, it is hard. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we do want them to and to it's going to get harder and it's going to get harder and it's never going to get any easier. <laughs> and this is just, you know, yeah, this is just the school time, yeah. the school part the of, of the, the journey. Yeah. Right. You're going to have to get a job after you make money. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I tell them, you know, prepare for for these small short sprints right. one by one and make sure they have enough support. Um, mm -hmm. So starting a company, building a company becomes, it's very sol sol solitary, um, mm -hmm. very lonely. Very lonely, yeah. Can be very lonely. So the to have a team in place or and or a family or group of friends yeah, support that system, understand yeah. what you're doing and can help you mm -hmm. um, is, is very important. I think that mm -hmm. Um, as, as driven entrepreneurs, sometimes we do tend to forget and we shut down to the world and we don't talk to people yeah. about our, our pains and our mm -hmm. sadnesses. And I think a lot of people end up burning out because of that. Yeah. Well, and they need to take a couple of days off a year. <laughs> Yeah, Probably. exactly. And, you know, so it's, there's, I don't, there's no I think shame, each, is it? There's, yes, there's definitely no shame. You know, the... the because some, some entrepreneurs mm -hmm. think that hustle, hustle, hustle is the key. Like, it is, but... Yeah, no, they, they I, actually, I think people need to just work smarter. Yeah. Uh, and, and another meme, but... Right. Um, I think that some people find it that shutting down for a few days is what they need. Some people shut down for a few hours a yeah. day because that's how they work, but they work seven days a week. Yeah. So I think each person needs to find their balance. Each mm -hmm. entrepreneur mm -hmm. needs to find their strategy, right. if you will. But it's important to be mindful that rest is, is very important. Right. So it's been, it's been several months that you have been in this ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. There are several ecosystems in the world that are in a similar state that Georgia's ecosystem is. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the one or two most effective steps that the ecosystem needs to take or has to be taken mm -hmm. for this ecosystem to jump, jump start the, the Take growth. it to another yeah. level. Um, I think that the most important thing is that um, every stakeholder in the ecosystem knows their role mm -hmm. um, and, and can execute on it. So. What I mean is we, we tend to put a lot of emphasis on the founders. I've been talking about entrepreneurs all right. the time here, uh, but the founders need, again, their support around. And that, that's capital, that's talent to, that they hire for their teams, that's clients mm -hmm. and the access to markets. So um, it's important that all of these pieces of the puzzle are there. Together. For the, together yeah. for the thing to work. Um, so, so that, making it one by one is not going to be as effective or effective enough, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's there's no point in having investors together. if you don't have founders yeah. to invest in. Yeah. There's no and point in having yeah. and vice versa. Yeah. And and then same thing with with the public side, right? If there the the policy isn't there, if it's if the if if there's regulatory issues that stop you from doing certain things, then there things, is no investors. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Got it. What's a startup for Pedro Vieira? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. That question also comes up a lot. Like, yeah, what's it does. what's what's a startup um, in the in the you know in the Silicon Valley way? I guess we tend to think about a, a technology play that can scale fast, right? Uh, and it, it, we tend to think that it's technology enabled yeah, yeah, yeah. at least. Um, but what about you, in my, Pedro? I think it's, it's the startup is just is just. Um, Starting something from scratch with very limited resources and not knowing and what's going to happen, not not knowing exactly how to do it, uh, and build it as you go. Um, mm. And it, it doesn't have to be a technology play. Right. Cool. Um, what if a DeLorean pops up in this room 
that Doug Brown, you know, brings out uh -huh. Pedro Vieira from 20 years ago? What are you going to tell him? <sighs> <laughs> Pedro Vieira from 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, keep up, keep up the good work, dude. <laughs> Great. Continue doing what you do. Yeah. And then this DeLorean disappears. Another one appears and Pedro Vieira from 15 years later uh -huh. comes up. What are you going to ask him? Uh, are you still having fun? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Great. Uh, who's your favorite comic, uh, comic book character? I don't know if I have one. I was never like a comics book guy, to okay. be honest. So okay. I don't have a good answer right. for you on that. Cool. Uh, well, tell me a little bit about the movies that you like, the films. Uh, I can tell you I, what I don't like. I don't mm -hmm. like sad movies. Sad movies. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, everything else I'm game. Okay. Uh, I like, yeah, I like comedies. I like yeah. action, thrillers. What kind of music do you listen to? Uh, again, very, very eclectic. Um, mm -hmm. Anything from, from hard rock yeah. uh, to hip hop. No sad music? No what? <laughs> no sad music? No sad music. <laughs> well, you know, Portuguese traditional yeah. music, Fado is pretty sad. Although I, I, I don't listen much to, to Fado. Right. But... Um, no, I, 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 you know, sometimes it is important to listen to sa to some sad music so you can like, right? It's sort of a kind of a cleansing process, mm -hmm. if you will. Uh, but but tend to to yeah. listen to more to happier music. Cu definitely. Couple of your favorite books. <laughs> Again, I don't know if I have a favorite book. It, mm. it varies over time, um, depending on on what I'm trying to learn. Mm -hmm. um, I typically read uh, things, uh, non-fiction, non-fiction. So, so you, not, you typically not, read non-fiction, okay. I'm, yeah, I'm not, not, not a fiction reader. Mm -hmm. um, been trying to, to start reading some older Portuguese literature. Mm -hmm. uh, not an easy task, but I feel like I don't know enough about Portuguese uh, writers. Right. Um, and then I, I read a lot about tech stuff. You know, Got it. Business Got management, it. operations. Uh, before we go on to, to, the, to the final questionnaire, uh, I asked you about Georgia's ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Let me ask you about Portugal's ecosystem. What do you think is the state there and what needs to happen there? Um, it's it's uh, a little bit more advanced, at a more advanced stage than, than Georgia, definitely. It is, definitely. Um, the government has been, the different governments have been uh, sponsoring the development of the ecosystem in mm -hmm. one way or another. Mm -hmm. On much bigger training. scale as well. At, at, a, at a slightly bigger scale, mm -hmm. um, with different programs. So it's, it's also hard to to measure mm. the scale yeah. per se. But uh, but the government has done probably more uh, on the investment side than I've, what I've seen so far in Georgia in terms mm -hmm. of creating investment vehicles mm -hmm. or creating matching funds for angel investors, for example. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, talent, uh, it's it's a very good um, place to both find talent and attract talent. I think uh, as as in Georgia, people like to live here if they can move here uh, because of the quality of life, because of the mm -hmm. friendly friendliness of the people, because of a, a, a relatively interesting tax system. Mm -hmm. uh, in Portugal is the same thing. I, th I think so, so it's yeah. It's very easy to attract I love the foreign day. talent. Yeah. yeah. And so a series of initiatives from the government have helped mm. definitely um, fast track that development. Uh, and now it just needs to continue growing. It's, it's, uh, there's more things to improve. Okay, this is the end of the interview itself, and now we're going to move to, to the final questionnaire invented by Bernard Pivot. Okay. Uh, and he's asking the same questions to, the, to, to everyone he has. And then okay. uh, James Lipton was, uh, had a show inside the Ector Studio in the U.S., which I grew up on, and he took on this questionnaire. And then uh, he passed away this year, and, and rest in peace, and I'm, I'm trying to carry the torch. Okay. So there's going to be 10 simple questions. Okay. I'm going to ask you the question and you tell me the first thing that comes, comes to your mind. Okay. That's right. It. Sound good. Okay. So what's your favorite word? Love. Love. What's your least favorite word? Hate. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. easy. Okay. <laughs> what inspires you? What turns you on? Money. Money. What, what turns you off? Money. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's a good answer as well. What's What's your favorite curse word? 
And I say it in English or Georgian. Anything. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. What, what about the Georgian one? <laughs> no, I don't have one. You don't, you don't have one? Know. We're going to teach you. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> What's your favorite sound? The ocean. The ocean. Okay. Specific. Uh, what's your least favorite sound? Screeching tires okay. of a car so you ain't behind be, you, you ain't <laughs> when be a you're racer. biking. <laughs> okay. oh, you're when a you're biker. Biking, okay. yeah, yeah, when you're a biker, you don't want yeah, a car skating behind you. No. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> so no cam blocks are behind you, huh? Exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, well, in, in another world, what, what profession would you take on? Photographer. Photographer. And what's the profession that you would never, ever participate in? Um, damn. Judge. Judge. Okay. Um, and the last question is, in 100 years, when you're not around, when you're not here, what do you want people to say? Hey, remember Pedro Vieira? <laughs> that, that, that. What do, you, what do you want them to say? Pedro Vieira. The... The big Joe. Um, <laughs> cool dude that helped a lot of people. Cool dude that helped a lot of people. One of the reasons why I'm doing these interviews is because when I looked around and I saw a lot of lemonade makers, so to speak, around me, the people that make history, and almost n no one knows about that history, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And that was one of the reasons. Another reason was because I saw that there's a lack of gratitude expression be between us, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like we don't tell enough thank yous to each other. That's true. And and then I I said why not make these interviews and why not show people that you know guys like you exist. So I want to tell you thank you because you know I've known you for a couple of months. I've seen you a couple of times, but every time I see you, you give something to me. You know what I mean? You give me something. You give me inspiration. You give me information. You give me con contacts whatever it is. Yeah. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you for this roller coaster because I enjoyed riding it. And um, I'm sure that in a hundred years, a lot of people will say, remember this guy, he was a <laughs> cool dude and he helped a lot of guys. Thank you for this honesty. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Pleasure.